Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from the road famous comedy store main room for our brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Wow. Come on, guys. Make some noise. You're here. It's the number one live podcast in the world. Mellow ass beginning. How about I am for the great Brian Redman is here. What everybody. is up, guys? How exciting. Feels good in here. Uh, we just got back today from fucking crazy touring. Hello to the thousands watching on YouTube. We are live uh, all around the world, and we've been traveling all around the world. We just got back today after two sold-out shows in Seattle last night, Vancouver, Portland, Spokane, Boise, Salt Lake City. We've done uh, nine Kill Tonys in seven days yeah, or something yeah. like that. And we half these episodes are already on our YouTube page, so you can watch it right now. The rest will be uh, released this week. A lot of you come to Kill Tony every Monday. We've been doing a Kill Tony every night yeah. since last Monday's. So tomorrow night's going to be our first night not doing a Kill Tony in seven <laughs> Thank days. Thank you, Jesus. Very exciting. I love it. I, I love it, too. With it. And uh, we get back out there on June 7th. Uh, the second leg of the tour continues in the goddamn middle of the United States of America. Lawrence, Kansas, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Iowa, Appleton, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Chicago, Madison, Minneapolis, Poughkeepsie, and New York, New York. Two shows at the Gramercy Theater. Get tickets for those at DeathSquad.tv, TonyHinchcliffe.com. Anywhere, really. You can just Google your city and kill Tony and fucking tickets will pop right up. Uh, go to CavemanCoffeeCo.com. Use the promo code KILLTONY. Save 15% on delicious uh, Caveman Coffee. I drink it before every episode. <laughs> Turns me into a goddamn chimp. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about life. And uh, the traveling has been absolutely insane. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where they were all great venues. They were great staffs at all the venues. And it's hard to pull that off. You know, hiring is challenging. But there's one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates. That place is ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards. But they don't stop there, do they, Brian? No, because with their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invites them to apply to your job. As applications come in, ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. ZipRecruiter is so effective, Tony, ah. that four out of five employers who use post... <laughs> Who post on ZipRecruiter get a candidate through the, s the website within the first day and a quality candidate. Wow, yeah, they definitely check all the applications. Uh, and right now, our <laughs> listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. <laughs> Heck yeah. It's important to, uh, to have good employees. It's important to do good work. But what about, uh, what about your time off? Or what if you get hungry when you're at work? When you need red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m., and ibuprofen at 10 a.m., Postmate it. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service all year round. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the United States, and they offer delivery from all the restaurants, grocery, and convenience stores, and traditional retailers you could possibly want or need. Yeah, you, you know, I use Postmates, and I think you do also, almost every single day, sometimes yep. twice a day. Had, I had it delivered here tonight yeah. to the comedy store right before this show. Yeah, and when you're on the road or if you're out of town and you don't want to eat the lobbies, you know, Pringles, you could Postmate it and get yeah. it right to your hotel because uh -huh. it's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within an hour. That's yep. fucking crazy. Anything. Yep. No more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you. Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses. Track your delivery in real time. That's the best, so you know exactly where your food and is. And get this. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use the code KILLTONY. That's the code KILLTONY for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it. Download Postmates and save with the code KILLTONY. You guys ready to start this show or what, huh? Come on, guys. 
I don't know if you know this or not, but we have more fun on Mondays than anyone else in the world. Are you guys ready to start this fucking show? Uh, I'm going to bring out a guest. Every single week we have uh, one of the funniest comedians in the world on, and uh, this week's no different. He w actually was a surprise guest and just joined us in Boise out of nowhere, shocked shocked the Boise crowd uh, by us bringing out the rare guest on the road. And uh, he does a lot. He's actually been on quite a few uh, road episodes, and he's uh, one of our favorite guests to have here in beautiful, our home at the Comedy Store, Los Angeles, California. And he's here for you tonight. Put your hands together for one of my favorite comedians, one of my best friends. It's the great Doug Benson, everybody. Come on. What? There he is. Wow. It's really him. Holy moly. He's got sunglasses on. He's live on Instagram. He's streaming. We're streaming. We're crossing the streams like Ghostbusters uh. right now. Uh, I'm Doug. making a periscope. Oh, that's oh. a periscope. Look <laughs> at you, you little submarine or you. Uh, welcome back, Doug. How's it going? I just hit stop broadcast because <laughs> that was enough. This is your show. How's everybody doing? Hey. Are so. you ready for some awkwardness? <laughs> I'm so Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm doing all uh, right. I Doug should, just I shouldn't started be near a sword. <laughs> Doug just started smoking pot today for the first time. I uh, love it so far. Which reminds me, uh, shout out to uh, Speedweed uh, giving out. Uh, they, yes. gave, they gave away five hundred dollars worth of uh, legal marijuana merchandise last week. How cool is that? I love Speedweed. Like, if you need speed or weed, they will. <laughs> mostly, uh, no, no. they Almost, will deliver. It's, it's, it's mostly it's, weed. Yeah, but, uh, it's coming soon though. <laughs> uh, but speaking of speed, uh, we flew in today with our uh, amazing band. They did great work over this uh, road trip. We have a band on this show. You know about this, right, I Doug? do know about you the remember? band. You uh, remember? And uh, they are unbelievable. Uh, unfortunately, the great Jeremiah Watkins couldn't make it. Hey, wow, look at this. It's the one and only Aphrodite, ladies and gentlemen. Kill Tony royalty. Look at her. She gets her own little entrance. Look at that shit. Uh, the band is uh, one of my favorite things in, uh, in all of uh, comedy. Jeremiah is not here tonight, but I do believe we have a, an amazing replacement that uh, you may recognize from previous Kill Tony episodes. Uh, so let's just get right into it. They uh, Every single episode, they commit to doing different characters. We never know what they're going to be. There's a separate green room uh, back there. Sometimes it's uh, a brand new character that we've never seen or heard before. We've had a lot of those lately. We had Southern Bells last night in uh, Seattle. We had Puppeteers in Vegas. You never know what they're going to be. Maybe it's the return of some of the most famous characters. Let's see what they are tonight. Put your hands together for the best damn band in the land. The leader tonight, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. Chroma Chris and Jesse Johnson. Let's see what's going on here. Whoa! <laughs> They're definitely track runners. This is hilarious. Uh, track runners for sure. I am pretty pretty positive on this one. Am I right there, Joel? Hi, I'm uh, Chad Gonzalez, Speedy for short. <laughs> All right, Speedy. Uh, I got that written down. Um, Joel, you're leading the band tonight. How do you feel? You know, I think it's uh, it's gonna be a good one. Uh, it's gonna be a, we're gonna have a good run. <laughs> this is I can't believe we, this is what a Mexican guy looks like with white guy hair. I had no idea that this was possible. Well, we just got off a marathon of a tour. I figured, why not keep it going tonight? I love it. And uh, then we have over here, we have what appears to be uh, Bill Clinton, uh, Jesse Johnson. <laughs> Jesse, welcome to the show. You're, uh, you're playing a uh, trumpet tonight? Yeah, actually, I'm uh, Phyllis Watkins. I'm Jeremiah's sister. And <laughs> I love to run away from my brother. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the trumpet. I'll be playing the trumpet. I love it. I love it. And then we have Chroma Chris, who uh, sort of always looks like a marathon runner, but he's dressed like one tonight. How you feel, Chris? Good. Uh, my name is Adolf Hurdler. <laughs> Wait, what? Adolf Hurdler? Hurdler. I run track and field, and I'm a great marathon runner, Tony. Okay. My goodness. I'm excited about this. This is the first time we've ever had track runners. You guys excited to uh, fucking track runners? 
I like I like to call him Shot Putin. <laughs> hey, I like that. <laughs> then we got fucking. Uh, I'm not all right. Um, yeah, so the drummer looks like uh, Anthony Kiedis uh, on a sober day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, Joel does. He looks like he's uh, gonna run for the border. Okay, uh, we're really uh, we're gonna warm up at some point here. Uh, so we have track runners. We got Doug Benson, Red Bands here, the soundboard, which leads me to this, the bucket of destiny, everybody, what the sh whole show's built around. The bucket. Before the show, a bunch of people sign up for the chance to get called up on the stage. Uh, sometimes it's a brand new uh, comedian doing it for the first time. Sometimes it's one of the great comedy vets that uh, swing through here quite often. You never know what's going to happen. If I pull your name out of the bucket, you get 60 seconds of stand-up comedy time. You know your time's up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> That's what that sounds like. Oh, okay. That's what that sounds like. So uh, don't uh, don't go over your time. This feels very mellow in here. I'll tell you. Coming off of a, coming what? off of eight, coming off of eight sold out giant theater and rock club yeah. road shows. Coming back home on a Monday to a tired, beat up, sad audience. I can't tell you how much it warms our hearts that really you just bring that fucking L.A. energy. Oh, <laughs> Game of Thrones so hangovers or something, yeah. right? Is that, is that what it is? No, it's not. There's no fucking Game of Thrones. These guys don't have HBO. Look at these okay, two yeah. daydreaming fucks in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Have you ever been called a daydreaming fuck? <laughs> daydreaming. He said yes. He has been called that before. Yeah, it really was. All right, you guys ready to start the show? I pulled a name out of the bucket. All right, well, who gives a fuck? I'll just pretend like you're a better crowd throughout the entire episode. I'll just imagine it. Put your hands together for your first comedian of the night, Colin Chidsey. Colin Chidsey. Wow, right from the middle of the crowd, he popped right up. Here we go. What's up, players? What's going on? I got problems, people. I got problems. Like earlier today, I was at my buddy's house, and uh, I get weird anxiety when I go into other people's bathrooms. Um, I'll be washing my hands, and then I just won't know what towels to come into. Okay, that did okay. All right, yeah, and uh, I'm 28. I've lived in LA most of my life, which means I like hiking in the daytime, and in the nighttime, cocaine. I like uh, running trails and busting rails. Okay, I'm uh, Joey Rogan by day, Joey Diaz by night. Ho! Oh! All right, that didn't do so hot. <laughs> Moving on. Um, right now, I'm living at home with my uh, little sister, 23 years old, and my parents. My little sister just moved back home because she's going through a divorce, and I'm back home because I've never left. <laughs> serious problems, serious problems. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Bow, 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 bow. Colin, welcome to the show. Hey, Tony. First time, right? First time. First time ever doing stand-up comedy? Yep. Wow, yeah. there you go. Heck yeah. yeah. Popped right up from the middle, second row there. Uh, heck yeah. A um, note for the future, drop saying when a joke worked or when it didn't. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Okay, nervous, but okay. Yeah. yeah. No, but it was... It was charming yeah i loved it i wrote it down i, I was gonna say my favorite you're part likeable. of that show was when you said okay that did okay <laughs> perfect beautiful that could be your thing uh, yeah. i might go against the grain and go against the uh, go against doug's advice i think you should stop doing what you thought were the jokes <laughs> and just do the middle parts where you acknowledge <laughs> how bad or good you're doing which is probably pretty bad yeah i and think it's say, a great this. opener to say this is going great <laughs> You applauded when I came out. You do not know who I am. <laughs> and yet, somehow, this is working. I love it. Uh, is it true that you uh, still live at home with your parents? I do, yeah. How old are you? 28. 28 years old, still at home with the parents. Yep. Where's home? Uh, I live in Santa Clarita, Magic Mountain, Six Flags, that area. Wow, Magic yeah. Mountain. I just yeah. named a bunch of fucking more <laughs> interesting things than yourself. Magic, Magic Mountain, Six Yeah, you Flags. left out wildfires. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So how are you still at home? What have you been you know doing what? with your life? You know what? Don't finish college. Get a retail job. Can't afford to live in Santa Clarita alone. 
Right. Yeah, so it's pretty sad. Right. But it's my biggest insecurity, so I'm glad I'm talking about it right now. How old were you when you... Uh, that's, that's what you should be talking about, yeah. first of all. Uh, yeah. All of your instincts are wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so how old were you when you dropped out of college? Um, I don't know the normal age where you do that. I don't know, maybe 20 No, the nor- normal age when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I dropped out too. Yeah. Uh, so, um, in that you've just been working retail. What type of retail are we talking about? I work, well, you're familiar with this place, AutoZone. Ah, yes, yeah. yes, I Get am familiar. Get in the zone. Yeah. yeah. AutoZone. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know what's yeah. weird? I, I, work, I work for AutoZone, but somehow... Anything that has a jingle this episode, you have to go right into I'm in, it. I'm in. I'll do, the, I'll do every jingle. Yeah, how long have you been at AutoZone for? Uh, about two Get in the zone. <laughs> no, no. Not after you've <laughs> already once, done it. Yeah, only, only once. once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how long have you been? AutoZone. <laughs> how long have you been working there? A couple years, but in the automotive retail industry for You like while. cars a lot? No, I don't. Oh, wow. No. Jeez. My goodness. I don't like cars at all, really. I um I like car parts. <laughs> 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 just parts of it. Yeah, just yeah. parts. Wow. So, I mean, they're working in an auto zone and not liking cars. Yeah. That's got to be fucking horrible. You know what? It's weird how things work out because when I was younger, I feel like I always wanted to be like in the entertainment industry or maybe an actor or whatever. Uh-huh. And working at AutoZone, for some reason, I just ended up doing two AutoZone commercials. Really? What? Yeah. Complete by coincidence? Well, they're like, hey, we're using employees. If you want to like send in your photo... We'll yeah, g- we'll give it a look. What did you do in the commercial? Uh, you know, just like, uh, like, uh, hi, you know, just. Wow, you really are built wow. for show business. Oh, uh, I was, that was incredible. <laughs> hey, My real God. quick, just do that again. I was at the counter. I was like, I had a paper. I was like, uh, get in uh, the zone, <laughs> auto zone. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is that which auto zone? The one in West Hollywood or something? No, like, what it's is in Santa Clarita, where I live. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So is it true that uh, that you spend your AutoZone money on cocaine? You talked <laughs> about doing a lot of hiking during the day yep. and cocaine at night. You know what? I missed one part of that. I was going to say I um, I don't really do cocaine. I have tried it two or three hundred times. Oh, wow. There you go. That's when you worked bu- at the Pep it. Boys. I worked there, too, actually. <laughs> I worked there, too. You did? Yeah. You used to be one of the Pep Boys. And yeah. You switched Get to AutoZone. in the boys. Yeah, I worked there. <laughs> Pep <laughs> Dude. Boys. So, uh, so you really do do it a lot. Why are you, are you addicted? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't do cocaine. Wait, what? No, no. What do you think? I'm a cop. All I, th- of a I thought it was funny. Um, I like I said, I have tried it a couple times, but I don't, I'm not an avid cocaine. No, user. you you didn't say you didn't say you can't say like I said. You because <laughs> when you said it, you said two or three hundred times. Yeah. So what? Which one is it? It's it's not that much, really. Do you think I'm your parents right now? <laughs> do you think I'm gonna? You think I'm going to kick you out of your house? No. <laughs> when you did it a couple of times, did you at least give a go in each nostril to make sure that it, you know, whether all right, or not it all was right. your thing? <laughs> Doing some coke. I <laughs> know <Auto> coke. <laughs> Joel might have some jet lag going on back there. <laughs> so uh, what do your parents do? Um, well, my dad, he <laughs> works in the industry, which is, how, which is why I ended up doing that. In the Do you mean in the, the city of industry? <laughs> he, he, work, he works in the automotive uh, He industry. really does work in the automotive yep. industry. Oh. Yeah. oh. Like Van Nuys. What, is, what does he do? Yeah, he, he just like, uh, he's like a vice president for some company. Like, is it a famous company? Uh, it's a car company? I yeah. feel like you would know. Why uh, are you I, I feel comfortable. Unclear. I feel comfortable talking about what I do, but I don't want to. T- well, let, let me just ask you this. Yeah. Final question on that. If you had to guess within uh, $100,000 each way, how much do you think your dad makes a year? Mm, maybe, any, like, maybe, any, t- maybe three. Three million? Three million. Really? No, no, no. I, I, we th- I thought we were talking about hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Of that, hundreds, 300,000. 300,000. Oh, so he's the vice president of like a company like uh, that. Kia, okay, cool. Kia guy. He's oh, a, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so what well, about your mom? Does your mom have a job? She does not. Her, she's, she's, obsessed, she's obsessed with, uh, we have four miniature dachshunds. Oh. She, that's her life. Yeah. She, she's constantly. She's a gold sh- digger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's constantly showing me uh, pictures of like wieners on her phone. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> I, I love that. I love that we get to hear all the jokes that he decided weren't good enough for his first minute. Yeah, no but, shit. Oh, I'm just gonna shoehorn these in here. Mom, just says, uh, stop sending me wiener pics with your dots in. <laughs> hey, okay, that did okay. Uh, 
I love the dog dicks. <laughs> What's the plan with living at your parents, man? You're you know 28. You're about to be 30 years old at your parents. We're, we're, we've already started the countdown. He has a separate <laughs> clock. Um, yeah. What's the plan? You know what? It's just I need to... Um, Do they like you staying there? They don't mind. Really? Yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a pretty good... Can help? we call your mom right now and ask her we if can. she wants you to move out? Yeah. All right, let's do yeah, that. Okay. Call her. Put her on speakerphone. If it goes to voicemail, pull the microphone away from the phone uh, so that the phone number isn't read. Uh, and also say, hey, air. mom, you're being recorded really fast okay. at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, mom, it's me, Colin. Yeah. You're being recorded. Hello? Hey, mom, you're being recorded. Oh, Jesus. That's not like that. <laughs> my, God, my God, Colin. You're going to have her freaking out, checking the Dotson's butts for bugs. Hey, I'm, uh, I got picked out of the bucket, so I'm on Kill Tony stage right now, and Tony wants to know if you want me to move. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I don't get to ask the question. You don't get to ask the question. Hello, well, Mrs. Chidsey. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I love it. Hi. Loud and clear. Listen to your beautiful voice. I love it. I heard about your four Dotsons. How are they doing tonight? They're awesome. They're sleeping. Oh, how cute is that? So I'm talking with Colin here, and we are, we're talking about how he's 28. He's working at an auto zone, right? Uh, and, and, he, and I asked him, I go, what's the plan to get out? He's like, ah, I don't know. And I'm like, do your parents want you out of the house? And he said, no. I got to ask you, we're here at the world famous comedy store, packed main room on a Monday night. Do you want Colin to move out of your house sometime in the near future? It doesn't have to be the near future. <laughs> <laughs> what? Get in the zone. <laughs> Get out zone. <laughs> Wow. Not the near future. How many how much longer do you want him there? You think you might have a you, you think you might be afraid of having some empty nest syndrome or something? I will definitely have empty nest syndrome. Yes. Oh my god. Are you are you aware that your son does cocaine? <laughs> That's what I'm, that's what it's supposed to sound like on a Monday night, right there. Now we're there. Can we restart the show, Postmates? All right. <laughs> Mrs. Chidsey, you're absolutely killing it right now. You're so much funnier than your son. Uh, this is incredible. Maybe you should come. Will you come? Uh, will you come one of these upcoming weeks and uh, swing by, see the show live? Oh, I actually brought my mom and No one cares what you're going to say, Colin. <laughs> oh, you brought your mom to the show before? Is that what you're going to say? Ron White with my aunts. Wow. Yeah. Wait, why do you go like that when you air say quotes. aunts? Because I don't even know, really know if they're my relatives, but they say they Was are. Was it just four Dotson stacked up on top <laughs> of each other? And Wearing a, a trench coat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're from the South. So I'm 21. Burr. Get in the coat. <laughs> <right>. Trench coat. <laughs> Okay. When you say that, I keep hearing Dotson instead of Dachshund. <gasps> Is it Dachshund? How many? Yeah, Dachshund. <laughs> what? Dachshund. Okay, okay. How, what are the dogs' names? Good question. What are the dogs' names, Mrs. Chidsey? Foose, Fancy, Chip, and Reason. Oh, Reason. Ooh, I like that. Reason? Reason. Is there a reason that you named your dog Reason? <laughs> I kill it with moms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it rhymes with one of the other names, I think. Yeah, treason. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, is Ms. any of them named Fleasin? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> they got Fleas in them. <laughs> <laughs> what? The fuck? Oh my God. Uh, all right, Mrs. Chidsey. Well, thank you so much. You're an instant Kill Tony legend. Will you come back and uh, will you come back again soon and come see another episode of Kill Tony? Yes, absolutely. Great. We'll, sa nice. we'll save a uh, we'll nice. save a booth for you when for when you come back. There you go. There's Mrs. Chidsey. And how about one more time? His first time ever on stage, Colin Chidsey. He's on Instagram at Colin Chidsey. All one word: C H I D S E Y. How fun is that? A little fucking mom talk. Hell yeah. Dude, that cocaine shit is what's so hilarious. <laughs>
Yeah. He's well, going to get a text message right about <laughs> now. <laughs> Colin, you know I love you, but I just hope they were kidding about the, um, about the old cocaine thing. I know a 28-year-old that's uh, <laughs> living at home with his parents shouldn't be doing that. Pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Sam Jones, everyone. Sam Jones. Here we go. One more time for Sam Jones. What's up, guys? Um, I memorized my set. I just don't know what to do with my hands. So I'm colored, huh? <laughs> um, I'm Mexican, and it comes with a lot of uh, teeth. Um, <laughs> I have more teeth in my mouth than family members in my house. Um, all in my ap- apartment. <laughs> but we call it a house because we're Mexican. Uh, man, I look like shit, huh? I got the mustache, the glasses, and the hat. They're uh, t- like alone. They're fine, but all together, they're like the Lord of the Rings of sexual assault. <laughs> One in three of you ladies know what I'm talking about. That's it. Hell yeah, Sam Jones. I love it. Hell yeah. Uh, did you just come in from a winter storm somewhere? What's happening yeah. right now? <laughs> Please don't go out of the Akbar and like blow us all up. All right? Oh, wow. Red band. Okay. <laughs> um, wh- what's the deal with that jacket? I don't know. I thought it looked Yeah, cool. can you open it up so to show us whether or not you have dynamite strapped to your He's body? He's Mexican. He's not that type of brown, yeah, guys. Yeah, it's just fireworks, not dynamite. Yeah, come on. It's adorable. For those of you listening to the podcast, this guy looks like a young Mexican Ben Stein. Uh, Anyone? Anyone? You are a uh, you are a uh, you are a young looking man. How old are you? Twenty one. Twenty one years old. The exact age that you would have to lie and say that you are if you were under twenty (laughs) one and had a fake ID. Where do Where are you from? I'm from uh, San Pedro. Wait, what? San Pedro. San Pedro. Yeah. Heck yeah. So that's like a what? Like an hour drive or something like that? About. Yeah. yeah. The last time I was on here, actually, uh, I made a joke about not being 21. And um, I was talking about my dead mom. And I was in the hallway after, the, after my set. And the waitress who sat at me, she said, uh, hey, I'm sorry for your loss, but you have to leave. <laughs> she, she, she <laughs> Is that true? That's true, yeah. When was that? When were you on? Like two months ago. And are you are you 21 now? Uh, yeah, I was 21 then. And oh, <laughs> you, oh, you really were 21. Yeah. They, did you show her your ID? Did you have to leave still? No, I showed her my ID. Okay. Oh, wow. There you, you go. You should have told that story during your minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Pretty sweet. Yeah, it's good. Like you also had some other, a couple of jokes were good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah started yeah. started strange. He's tried to yeah. he tried to go that awkward route. I'm just like I know when I went when I came up here I was gonna be super anxious, so I just try to work with it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what you know what helps is uh is doing a different joke first than the one that you did. That'll help <laughs> with your anxiety because then you'll be doing better than what you did from yeah. the get. Yeah. Could you try doing good jokes first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But Mexican, also <laughs> yeah. He said I'm, 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 I look like shit. I'm Mexican. I have so many teeth. I have more teeth in my mouth than family members in my house. I don't house even get that. Because I'm Mexican. It's just bad. Yeah. No. You put your phone down on the table and it had your jokes on it. Yeah. What if I had just grabbed it? I would have. W- to go. Were you, were you wouldn't have known what to say. I would have went acapella, I guess. Um, acapella. That yeah. doesn't. That's not what that means. <laughs> Go a cappella. Yeah, do your joke. Do your jokes without the band. <laughs> That's what you just said you'd do. You'd do a non-musical version of your jokes. You so know, you're, you're 21 years old. Uh, you uh, you live with your parents still? Yeah. In San Pedro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, what does your dad do? He's I don't know. He's a mechanic, I think. Oh. You don't wait, even wait know. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, is he? Uh, 
for an auto zone, perhaps? <laughs> Some type of, maybe he's the vice president? I think we're figuring something out. Does your mom have dachshunds? <laughs> what are they called? What are your hobbies? <laughs> Growing a mustache? <laughs> I know that's one of my favorite hobbies. He's a, yeah, you're working on it too. Yeah. It's, it's a nice faint one. Mm-hmm. That is that is good. a uh, that is what what we would call a 7 a.m. shadow or something like that, just <laughs> yeah. bright and barely existing at all. That was like you like four or five min- months in though when you were, grew out your mustache, Tony. <laughs> okay, roasted. You Does ro- Brian ever push I the bear sound on himself? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately <I> not. <laughs> uh, so you said you have a dead mom. Is that true? Yep. Uh, when did she die? Two years ago. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How'd she die? Uh, she, she fell on her head. She fell oh, on her right, head. That's, that's right. right. She we was working at Burlington that. Coat Factory, and she fell off one of those ladders, right? Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> back, uh, back to the show. Um, so there you go. All right. But so hang on a second, Tony. Burlington Coat Factory. <laughs> You probably won't die. <laughs> so, Sam, what do you do? I, I run food in a restaurant. You run food at yeah. a specific restaurant. I like restaurant. that job. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we got the, some food runners right over here. <laughs> Mostly protein packs and whatnot. So, uh, what do you do for fun, Sam? You're 21 years old. What's a, what's a 21-year-old up to nowadays? Oh, what are you guys doing fucking. other than collecting all the Pokemon? That's it. Nothing, really. I just... Come on, there must be something. What do you do to like take your mind off the fact that uh, everything that we know about you? You fucking? Yeah, you I'm fucking, I'm dude. Fucking. Yeah, I'm fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Who, y- yeah. who are you? Who are you hooking up with? My girlfriend. Your girlfriend? Yeah. How long have you two been together? Um, a year and a week. A year and a week. Wow, yeah. you count the weeks. <laughs> a week and a half, <laughs> isn't it? That's incredible. A year um, and one week. So you celebrated your anniversary last week. What'd you guys do? Oh, no, a year in a week, sorry. Oh, so yeah. what are you going to do? You have any big surprises for her? you? Could, um, I, you know, you could always take her to a magic mountain in beautiful Santa Clarita. I have no idea. Um, something, I don't know if I wanted to mention this. Oh, go ahead. If she, okay, if, she's, if you see this, Athena, I'm sorry for mentioning this, but like I've never told her I loved her, and it's been almost a year. Are you her serious? Name's what? Dude, you should call her and tell her you love her right now, dude. Oh! You won't do it? I can't do it. I can't. Uh, how about we call your dead mom then? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Are you guys all just trying to Seance. pick up the... Seance. Seance. That was for me. You guys all trying to fix what happened earlier? You know, when I call myself the food runner, it's because I have diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something, Sam? Yeah. I am very, very disappointed in Joelberg for even suggesting yeah. that I we call trouble. your girlfriend and you tell them that uh, you love her. But now I must ask you, why won't you call her and tell her that you love her? Oh, fuck. No, this is great. You guys like what we're talking about right now, right? Show Sam some love. It's closing it. Look at them, Sam. Why are you looking down at this bang, blank-ass fucking red floor? These people love you. Okay, so why won't you tell her, uh, why, why won't you tell her that uh, you love her? Um, Look at them. Well, tell them. I, I don't I don't know if I do, you know? (laughs) After a year? You need to break up, dude. All right, red band. Okay, okay, so I... I... I love her. Yeah. I'm just not in... Like, I don't think I'm in How do you know what love is? Wow, you're not breaking up with us right now, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) How do you... What do you you mean you love her, but you're not in love? Can you explain that to us a little bit from your own 21-year-old perspective? Um, I just... I, I like hanging out with her. She's, you know, the best. Uh huh. And you like, like having you like having sex with her. Yeah. And you like what what kind, what type of hanging out do you guys do? Uh, we go to comedy shows sometimes. We do do whatever. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And so, w- what do you mean you're not in love with her? Um. Well, I. <laughs> I just I, I guess because I wouldn't feel comfortable saying like I love you, you know. Why wouldn't you feel comfortable? Because I don't think I'm in love with her. It's oh. Just like a wow. This, so it just goes both ways. It's yeah. just an endless circle of you just don't want to say it. Okie dokie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> have you ever said it ever in your life? Like to your... Yeah. In, yeah? yeah. You have an ex-girlfriend that uh, you were in love with? Yeah. So you're still in love with her? 
Your no, ex-girlfriend? No, no, no. no yeah, okay, no, right. No. Okay. Um, so I, w- the thing that I don't get is you told her, but but you won't tell this one. So then why stay with her? Because I enjoy being with her. Like, I, I, I it sounds cheesy, but, like, I love her as a person. <laughs> So I, what I don't you her love that. her as? I mean, there's a difference. Sweet, sweet, young love. Oh, fuck. There's a difference, I think, between, like, loving someone and being in love with them. You yeah, know? what is that difference? I don't fucking know. You don't That's know? It's a feeling. It's a feeling. I think. My God. So Sorry. are you telling us that in a week your big plan for the anniversary is just lie to her and tell her that you love her? Is that the plan? No, no, no. no. Right. What are you gonna do for the anniversary? Are you yeah. gonna take her anywhere special? I'm broke, dude. I don't know. Oh, wow. So yeah. I'll so saying something. you love her is way cheaper than getting her. A gift. <laughs> hey! I see. Chroma I Chris out of nowhere with a grand slam, silent but deadly as always. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about being thrifty and telling your girlfriend that you love her? <laughs> Her Give her that. You could pick a flower out of somebody's garden. Tell her you love her. It'll blow her fucking mind, dude. Pussy's going to be wetter than your back. <laughs> Why? Why? You guys want to be quiet, crowd? I'm going to push it. I have to do these jokes. What are you going to do? Complain about it? Hopefully your girlfriend doesn't have the internets. You know, like, like are you scared that she's going to watch gonna, this episode? She knows? I don't think she knows, but... She'll see it eventually, I know. Yeah. She definitely will. If she there gets really mad at you about it, will that make you love her? <laughs> Does she has she told you that she loves you? She has. Fuck. <laughs> she has told you that she loves you and then you just looked back at her and you're like, "Uh, I have a lot of I have a lot of teeth in my mouth." Uh, <laughs> I have some more teeth than uh, family members in my apartment, or my house, I mean, which is an apartment, because I'm Mexican. I, uh, I love anyway, you see you tomorrow. <laughs> Man. Your girlfriend's not like 75 or something weird like that, by the way, right? No. Why, why would she be 75? Because then all this would make sense, you know? Like, it would. I, I don't understand what you're talking about at all <laughs> on a live show yet again all right. with so many people watching. Write it down. All right, I'll write it down and I'll look back at it later right. and uh, we'll, we'll do our homework. If his girlfriend was understand. 75, then I get dating her for a year and not loving her, right? You're just waiting for her to die or some, some Mexican, or like whatever. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my God, Brian Redband. Let's, thank uh, God, thank God he explained it. Yeah, let's let the, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, I'll just you, take you it get, from here. There he goes, Sam Jones, right. everybody. Sam! Let's just get out on. Uh, let's get out while we're ahead. That microphone is. L- your mic's loud tonight, Red Band. I think you're louder than me. I project my voice. Yeah, no, no, that's definitely not it. I'm a professional. Uh, so often, and uh, you're more quiet. Yeah, let's do that. Yep, that's right. Sound better already. 100%. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Very good. How about <laughs> by that? Maybe maybe I was hinting at you're talking too much on uh-huh. the fucking show tonight. How about that? Yeah, all right. Your microphone's too loud. You know what? I need another drink. Yep. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'll take uh, a Crown yeah, Royal and Coke. Every, there, Let's do it, okay. David. <laughs> there you go. Crown and Coke. Turkey yep. ginger. There you go. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Michael Robert, everyone. Michael Robert. Here we go. Let's rebuild momentum from scratch on this show that we've accomplished twice. We're going to start again. Michael Robert, live on Kill Tony. Wow. <laughs> Recently moved out here from Philadelphia. Yeah. Been with the same girl 15 years. Decided I'm not having sex anymore, though. It's my choice. Free will. I just don't want to do the work, man. Like, if I want to have sex on Wednesday, I got to start the process on Sunday. She calls it a emotional foreplay. So, like, on Sunday, like, I got to come home with the flowers. Monday, special dinner. It's got to have, like, capers and shit in it or it doesn't count. Tuesday, massage. Wednesday, if I'm lucky, maybe, maybe I get to have some standard Christian missionary sex. (laughs) Yeah, it's not worth it. Got five kids. I don't even like kids. I don't, man. They're weird, man. These fucking kids are weird these days, man. Like, why are they so thirsty all the time? Like, every two minutes, like, I need water. They're sitting on the couch doing absolutely nothing. 
Nothing. Watching TV. They're like, I need some water. Yeah, go in the backyard. Run around, you fat fuck. Maybe I'll get you some water. All right, Michael Robert. Fuck yeah, Michael Robert. Laying down the law. That's one tough daddy right there. Hell yeah, that's a way to make sure your kids still aren't living with you when they're 28. Right? Be that's tougher, tough right? Yeah. That's amazing that you have five kids. How old are you? 39. 39 years old. I got old. five adopted kids through foster care. Wow. Oh, look at you. That's nice. Goddamn American hero. Is that because you're not having any Yeah, everyone's like, everyone's like, you know, how do you do this shit with the comedy, you know? I'm going to check in with Phyllis Watkins over there. Is that because you're not getting any sex or... No, well, you know, I gotta do the work. I gotta do the fucking work. But no, if I want to do the work, I'll get the sex. You know. Jesus so. Christ! Wow. Are you gonna fuck our trumpet player? Jesus. What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the pooper! Wow. So, uh, Michael, how long have you been doing stand up? About five months. Five months. What made you start now? So, like five months ago, I went to an open mic. My friend brought me, signed me up, got up there. I was like, fuck, my OCD was like, fucking, you gotta do this shit now. Are you sure so it's OCD it or is it Tourette's? You just said fuck twice in four seconds. Dude, it's yeah. both, right? You know, is that no. why you have so many kids? You have OCD. You d adopted one and you're like, I need four more. No, dude. <laughs> dude, it's not my my is wife. It? It's my wife, <laughs> man. My wife. She's my an wife. She's, an she's an atheist, bro. She, she like believes in hard work, you know? She's like, that's why I'm allowed out. I'm Mexican, know? dude. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I got two Mexicans. Whoa, Mexican. Jesus oh, wait Christ. a minute. What is you, that? Talk, you talk about your kids you like they're fucking delivery like orders or something. Like, I got two I Mexicans, got two pizzas, browns. and a Chinese. I got a brown <laughs> or two. I got a white one. Are you, are you trying to be the top Bill Burr impersonator in the country? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Dude, to fuck him. you, man. <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. He stole that Fuck shit you, man. from us. Fuck oh, wow. He Look act like he you. don't like us, but he stole our attitude. But we forgive him because we're the city of brotherly love. I love All that. Right. So I'm interested. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, to this whole real life thing. You have two Mexicans. What else? What do we got there? We interrupted you. I got you. Uh, two black children and Make a white child. Wow. Make soda. Two Mexicans, two black children is what we're calling them. There's five called, total. You can't, you can't just throw the S on the end of uh, black, can you? We got two Mexicans, two black uh, children. Uh, <laughs> there's a little, there was a little transition there. I heard it. What's number five? He's white. <laughs> Come on, the oldest wow, one, right? Man. You had to, you had to, you had to get the uh, first white one was the white kid, kid the, right? Yeah, he's the oldest one. First, Dude, is that right? The first adopted kid was white. You had to yes, make sure the fucking not yes, it wasn't was. too crazy or whatever. Well, well, <laughs> then you're then you're like, I'm ready. Well, I'm gonna go extreme. Kid. Let's get some blacks and Mexicans. <laughs> 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 it's like Chrome delete. <laughs> uh, go ahead, ask the question. Uh, guess I know who your favorite one is. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Is there one that you wish you had the receipt for? Yeah. What was you, that? I'm do sorry. you wish you could return one of them ever? Yeah. No, you don't return them, bro. No? No, you don't return them. How no, about like voting for Trump? You fucking love them. You, know, yeah. you do your best. You know, yeah. but like everything you see happening in the world, like as happening in my house on a micro level, like the white ones fucking building the wall to keep the two Mexicans out. They're trying to climb under. He's flying fucking drones and shit. That's what? incredible. It's nuts. What? Wait, wait, the white kids flying drones? Yeah, they're fucking they're building the wall in the hallway. I got to tear it down every night. Keep oh. the kids out of his room. Jesus is this minute Christ. two if we let you keep going? <laughs> yeah, it yeah, is. Okay. <laughs> what do you do for work? I'm a preschool teacher. Preschool teacher. Oh, Look at man. you. You do I not run a daycare center. That's everything great. about you does not match the way you look. I know. Uh, no. <laughs> You look I'm like you got dishonorable too, discharge in uh, the Marines. Meanwhile, you're like this <laughs> super nice guy, just loving kids and whatnot. What were you showing me there? What were you doing? Well, I was going to come up, you know, because I got the running fucking thing on. I ran here. Wow. Jeez yeah. Louise. <laughs> My goodness. What are you running from? Not child support. <laughs> <laughs> what does your no, wife do? No. She stays home with the kids. That's amazing. And you teach preschool. Yeah, I'm with kids all fucking day. Man. My God, that's amazing. <laughs> You sound happy about it. What do you do? That. What do the kids call you? <laughs> Mr. R? Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just call me Michael. Do you, uh, how old are your adopted kids? Uh, so we got two, three, eight, nine, and 14. Wow. Wow, dude. Oh, those are the, all the best ages. Yeah. yeah I'm not fucking sure. around. Give, give a high five to your wife. She must be like, that's... Fuck a, yeah. She's going to see this shit. Oh, great. Yeah. 
There you go. I, I mean, like she that. must be pretty happy to not have given birth to any of them. Right? Yeah, she looks fucking great, man. That's She's yeah. 34. Yeah. You know, I mean... Uh, yeah, like I said, like she's, it's all her, man. She's an atheist. She believes in hard work. That's why she lets me out here, because I fucking believe in this shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. Jesus. Wow. When she's you a, say she's an atheist like that, that, that does believe in around, something. Dude. Hey. I he's going to bite us. I'm not us. fucking around. Man. Heck yeah. My God. Yeah, I love you're, this shit, man. Jeez. You're, you're more uptight than your wife's <laughs> pussy. Because <laughs> she, cause she only adopts. But yeah, still right. Tight. All right. Um, so... Man, that is so interesting. Uh, so <laughs> what do you do to get away from all these kids in your life? You teach at a preschool. You have kids all over the house. What's something that you do for fun to uh, get your I mind really away? I don't fucking like Other than I'm, not a big, I'm not a big fan of fun. Like, I take walks. You take you know, walks. on the mountain. Yeah. I hate you know? fun. I'm going to adopt as many children as possible. Yeah. <laughs> right. I fucking hate this coloring shit. Where do you yeah, like to walk? Fucking finger paints and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where do you like to walk to? <laughs> I live Away like in the Santa the Monica preschool. Mountains. <laughs> what? I live right in the mountains, so I just go right outside. And oh, fucking walk. man. What mountains? Santa Monica Mountains. I'm out by Ventura. I saw you at the fucking, that fucked up Chinese restaurant place. Why are you cussing Jesus so fuck much? Fuck, 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 you uh, you would be an interesting uh, preschool teacher. Any fun things that you ever do? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, you uh, ever do anything fun uh, to entertain the kids? Anything uh, sort of? Yeah, I do. Like you know, I play the drums. I beatbox. I fucking do gymnastics. Oh, Wait, can you can you give, can you give us a little example of uh, can you get us a little example of little some of your uh, some of your beatboxing skills? Some of your preschool sure. uh, beatboxing. Yeah, I'm just like, come on, kids. Let's, you know, I get them going. I do, I do a little gymnastics with them. Like, I do backflips and shit. You know, I do shit like that and get them all pumped up. Wow. Yeah. Is that it? You just yeah, do a few bars of the they're, theme they're like of Seinfeld? Old, <laughs> <laughs> What's in that? <laughs> uh, so... Um, and you said that uh, you said that you play the drums. I don't know if you know this or not. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but on this show we have a little contest called the Mexican Drum Off. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys don't seem excited about this whatsoever. During the Mexican Drum Off, uh, Michael, you have a chance to become a full-time member of the band and uh, oh, yeah, be the real? new drummer of the band. If you can only beat the returning champion, Joel Berg, uh, in a drum solo competition oh, to where anything goes, trying to have a great drum solo and be entertaining and have the audience love you all at the same time. Uh, <laughs> you, are you down Hopefully for the challenge? You love me by now. Uh, yeah, I am. Fuck it. I mean, I, I'm lefty, but I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'll give All, right, All right, sure. Okay. Well, going, uh, <laughs> giving you a little drum solo, trying to, uh, trying to become the new Kill Tony drummer. You can leave all your kids. It's the way out. You could go on tour with us. Put your hands yeah, together awesome. for Michael Robert, everyone. So, am I getting up there? Yeah. He has such a tough look on his face. I don't understand what he's so angry about. Every time he passes me, he touches me. I don't like it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, giving oh, you a little... He's getting rid of some of the drums. Oh, he's switching, switching things, things around things a little, little bit. Heck yeah, left-handed. He's oh, going for it. it now. He knows one day his kids are going to grow up and watch this video and go, that guy's not my real dad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here he is, Michael Robert, everybody. Wow, that's actually really fun. The crowd's going wild here. Michael, yeah, it up. that's hey, pretty good. Left-handed, switched it over. That's incredible. That's a pretty good performance there, Michael. It's gonna be tough to beat. It's gonna be tough to beat. Uh, but a little fun fact: Joelberg all time is undefeated in Mexican drum offs. It is his world. 
Michael, step on up here. Come on up. Come on back up here. And uh, I'm going to bring out the... Uh, have, a se have a seat on one of those stools right yeah, there. Yeah, just have a seat over there. And uh, I'm going to bring out the uh, reigning, defending drummer of Kill Tony, undefeated all time, here to defend his throne. I present to you, in a Mexican drum off, the one and only Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no ass for you podcast listeners. He uh, has no physical butt whatsoever. <laughs> all right. So if I win this, I'm the father of all his kids. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, defending his throne, it's the one and only Joel Bird. <laughs> Wow. My goodness. And he's getting one of uh he's getting a track medal for that performance by the other band members. That is was just beautiful. Uh how many of you have uh the child lover Michael Robert uh winning this one? Raises his, <laughs> raises kids, teaches them in pre How many of you have Joelberg winning that one, huh? Ooh. Wow. Oh, he's butt clapping. <laughs> and <laughs> hey, you did really good, though. You did. I've, never so, I've never seen somebody effectively twerk with just skin back there yeah. before. It's incredible that you can make your skin jiggle. Mexican square butt, man. Uh, so, sure. Uh, but Michael... <laughs> he just, he just hit them harder than you did. I he I hit know. them really yeah, hard. He him. really went for it. Maybe next yeah. time, Michael. You were great, though. It was nice mm. to meet you. Thanks, Welcome Tony. to the comedy uh, community. He's on Twitter at Michael Robert Comedy. And you just saw him here for the first time on Kill Tony. Live at the world famous comedy I store. I like that guy. You guys having fun out there? I'm going to dig deep in this bucket. All right, this looks like a familiar name. Put your hands together for Eric Staniford, everyone. Eric Staniford. Oh, lucky corner. From the far corner. Here he comes. Here he is. One more time for Eric Staniford, everyone. How's it going, guys? So uh, I recently became single. I'm not hyped about it. Last time I became I was single... We all had flip phones, so I don't know how things are working anymore. The apps are teaching me a lot about myself. Apparently, uh, I like my women the same way I like my coffee. Too hot to put my dick in. <laughs> the kind of hot where if I do put my dick in for some reason, it's coming out with blisters for sure. Uh, I was on a date recently and uh, figured out that uh, I was the dumb one. <laughs> I confused Warren and Jimmy Buffett in conversation. That's not something you can backtrack from. It's like, if he was in charge of the economy, why aren't things more laid back? Thank you. Heck yeah. Eric Staniford. How's it going, man? You've been on this show before. Yeah, uh, back in November. Heck yeah. Uh, welcome back. Um, Thank you. Very fun set. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, this week makes one year. One year anniversary. Wow, that's so fucking cool, man. What do you do Are for you willing to tell stand-up you love it? Yes. <laughs> Indeed. What do you do for a living? Um, I work at the Los Angeles Public Library. At the Public Library? Wow. That's so cool. What do, you, what do you do at the library? Just um, tell me... 
Uh, I'm in the training department, so I train the employees how to deal with uh, crazy situations that arise. Do you get a lot of cam girls, like, you know, like having sex shows and stuff like that? And, like, you know what I'm talking about. Red band. That's, like, a real thing. Like, uh. like, like, they'll go down an aisle and just, like, get naked and do Instagram videos and shit like that. It, it, it doesn't happen frequently, I guess. But you have had a... Uh, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, all right. All right. Just agree with them. Free, free Wi-Fi. Just agree and move on. Heck yeah, exactly. Did, you, did exactly. you have such confidence in that hot dick coffee joke that that's why there was so much setup that seemed irrelevant before you got to it? I had to try and set it Wait, the, don't woo me. <laughs> try to set it up a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, that joke, if you just straight up said it, then it would have exploded immediately because that joke's perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I did, I, you know I felt I, mean? I needed to build it a little bit. It doesn't need I'm it. single. Well, what does that have to do with it? Like, why do we a care? A very, very, very common thing that uh, that's hard to believe, but you, you don't really, no matter how many times you hear it, you never, you don't believe it until you're four, five, six, seven years in to this is you don't need as much setup as you think. We think that, but you really don't. And he's absolutely right. You could have easily have said, I like my women like I like my coffee too hot to put your dick in and the pl- and it would have even I know it's hard to believe that it would have been even bigger but you got to try it that way to realize that it can be bigger the less on the front the more you get cuz the more it's a surprise and you just don't need it it's all use need, needless information for, especially since it's such a great joke yeah uh, when you said not, like the whole coffee thing i think all of us was oh here's another one of those generic coffee jokes but you've heard every one of those before but when you said it, it was like whoa there's another one <laughs> there it is, exactly. <laughs> yep, there's another one. Busting the myth that uh, there's too many of those, which is crazy because you look like both of the myth busters at the same time. <laughs> Smushed together. Not many people look like both of them. A lot of people said, hey, look, it's friend of the show, Bobby Lee, everybody. Bobby! Hey, Bobby! Bobby, what are you doing? Bobby, take you your doing? shirt off. Take Come your shirt on. off. Come say hi, Bobby. What are you doing? She's Louise, just walking through. I mean, maybe the gong sound made him leave. Yeah. Oh, my ancestors. Come on, Brian. She's (laughs) Louise. Uh, So, Eric, you work at the public library. How long have you done that for? Uh, About eight years now. Eight years? That is so interesting. And you're the trainer. I got recently. I got promoted within the last two years. You got you. A lot of librarians are like. Uh, sort of like oh, I think the uh, I think the stereotype is that it's a lot of older white ladies. Is that true? Uh, uh, sort of. It's it's changing a lot now because things are getting more digital and stuff. Yeah. Maybe. You ever hook up with anybody at the library? You ever get yourself a little book cougar or something like that? You know what I mean? Uh, not not lately. No. No. You really have never been like she's like no not here and you're like shh. <laughs> no no no. <laughs> Uh, wh- how about a girlfriend? Anything like that? Uh, I've, I've started uh, dating recently. I've, I've been uh, recently uh, uh, dabbling. Yeah? Uh, like what? What was the most recent date that you went on? What was that like? Um, uh, I'm, I'm dating a, a lady now, and um, let's see. We've, does she uh, know the Dewey Decimal System? She does. <laughs> All right. Things are going good. Yeah, yeah. That, that was my in. Uh, <laughs> she likes books, so that's how we met. You nice. met at the library? Uh, we met at a Mardi Gras party, but it was a... <laughs> a Mardi Gras party? It was a Mardi Gras party for books. Yeah. So we were reading about Mardi Gras. Heck yeah. The conversation went to books pretty quick. Wow. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And what does she do? Uh, she works in uh, marketing and stuff. All right. Yeah. And wh- what did you guys do on your date? Uh, we went and had barbecue in Echo Park. Barbecue at Echo That's Park. That's cool. That's cool. Was it like someone else's barbecue or what? what no, did you no, mean? it was it was uh, one of those restaurants on Sunset Boulevard. It's oh, good. cool. Well, that's fun. What'd you do after the after barbecue? Went and all both shit your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Got really tired. Wanted to lay down. Probably give yeah, her your meat. Yeah, the, the itis and the uh, uh, Netflix comedy specials, pretty much. Oh, there you go. All right. Anything else uh, that we should know that's a fun fact about you that's interesting? Uh, I'm a photographer. I've been shooting a lot of photos of some of the open micers here lately. Um, I shot photos for uh, William Montgomery and oh. Malcolm Hatchett. Um, oh, you actually cool. shared one of my photos on your Instagram of oh. the William Montgomery with the 
the, the uh, wrapped in the American flag. And oh, that's one of my favorite pictures Thank ever. Thank you very much. Wow, that's incredible. You uh, you design you uh, you like directed that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I begged him for weeks. And American finally, flag, finally Pabst Blue Ribbon can, like it's or something like that. It's just classic William. I'm that so fucking. relieved he has a skill outside yeah. of yeah, he's comedy. Great. Yeah. Eric, uh, Eric is awesome. the designer of the Kill Tony Band skateboard grip tape. Wow. wow. Yeah, no, that, that got brought up the last time I was on stage, and I've been doing that. So we've been raising money for the uh, five bucks from every sheet uh, goes to the band's costume fund. So uh, realitygriptape.com. Yeah, that, out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is so cool. And well, you, could, you, you could use the tape for other things, like you know, like sidewalks or like stairs up to your house. Yeah, if it's yeah. Icy if you wanted to get something. fancy with some home decoration, you could do that. Did you really dip it. into the costume fund this week? <laughs> You don't even know. <laughs> Get in the fun. <laughs> Costume fun. And where again can they find that uh, band tape again? Uh, realitygriptape.com or uh, on Instagram, just realitygrip. I love it. Eric, a great set, great jokes, man. Thank you very uh, much. There he goes, Eric Staniford. He's on Instagram at E-S-P-E-R-I-C. E-S-P Eric. All one word. How many of you uh, like it when comedians do good during their set? Uh, how many of you like it when comedians do bad on the show? Wow, that's a, that's quite a, that's pretty good. Felt like a lot of the same people. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Elmer Sainz. Sainz. It's Sainz. Oh, here he comes again from right in the middle. Here we are. Here comes Elmer, everybody. Hello. <clears throat> what did one pedophile say to the other? Good morning, Padre. <laughs> that's that's uh, a Catholic uh, joke. It didn't go well when I told it to my parents and my brothers. My, uh, my mom threw holy water on me. Yeah, it didn't go too well. Uh, so I've been thinking about uh, what it would be like to date a blind person. Wouldn't it suck? No offense to anybody that, that, that's uh, blind. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're you're at a party, you want to drink, but you're always a DD. You know, you're like motherfucker, he's having a blast, just fucking, just knocking him down, all blind. <laughs> I have an uncle that was blind, so it's okay for me to say this. He's dead now, but he gave me the okay, he gave me the okay ahead of time. I'm also 28, but I don't live with my parents. No offense. I'm sorry. And I'm Mexican, and I, we have a house. All right, Elmer, signs. Signs? Signs. Signs. Like signs, like... Uh, Elmer, signs. Like signs, like uh, Mel Gibson. Signs. Okay, sign. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know the word. What right? happened in that first, what was that first joke? Uh, pedophile, uh, what, say to the what, other what pedophile, good morning, Padre, as in like they're both uh, Spanish priests. Or just Catholic priests. It's either that or scout leader. It depends on which pedophile you're Right, right, right. I mean, it's just, uh, he's just calling uh, priests pedophiles. Yeah. I or scout so. leaders is the so. alternate. Well, yeah. Elmer, okay. how long have you been doing stand-up? First time. Ever. Hey, that's what I was hoping yeah. to hear. There's the goat. Thank yeah. God it's your first time. Yes, tragic. Hell yeah. yeah. I love Thank it, you. man. How old are you? 28. 28. Here mine. you are yeah. starting out at the uh, the comedy store. Is this something yes, you sir. think you're going to do again? You're going to keep Thinking trying about it? it. Getting yeah. tired of my uh, day job. So. Where are you from? Here. And what's yeah. your day job? Born and raised. Uh, construction worker. Construction worker. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Three years. Uh, so, uh, what do you do exactly for construction? Uh, we do water main, like the, uh, the water pipe that goes right. all to the, uh, to all the houses and the, right. uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, exciting. Uh, uh, so like if those break, you're the guy that goes in there. Correct. Wow. Yeah. And we replace, uh, most of the pipes are about 60 years old. So uh -huh. we got to replace them every once in a while. I love it. Look at you. Yeah. Did you always look like Mario or only when you started, uh, uh working with all these pipes? Like Luigi? Just, I uh, love it. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> what else about you, Elmer? Tell us more fun facts about you, your real life that we might find uh, interesting. Uh, let's see. I broke my jaw once. Yeah, how'd you do that? Uh, wasn't looking at the uh, batting cages, and uh, I was right next to the net and the, uh, the ball went straight oh. through the net. Wow. Yeah. 
I used to be as fat as Red Band, but now I'm 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 a little sh- I'm a little thinner. Because what they wired your jaw shut. Yeah, six weeks. My goodness. Yeah. What else, Elmer? Tell us more I fun mean, facts oh, about shit. Elmer. Sorry. Oh shit! I saw. A oh, we have a water main break. Can once. you fix? Uh, no. Can you uh, put that in a pipe? I saw Doug Benson uh, be too high and drop a drink once. Is that? A, is I don't so think we, that no, being I, too uh, high. You're a little made bitch. Me knock over my drink. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, El- Elmer, tell us more about you. Born and raised in L.A.? Yeah. What part? Uh, it's called Bell Gardens. Bell uh, it's Gardens. A, yeah. It's, uh, so not really L.A. Off the 5, 7, 10. It's, a, it's, it's near, near L.A. How long was your trip here today? Uh, about 25, 30 minutes. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wh- which it's, direction it's is it's that? It's right there, man. <laughs> oh, okay. It's Jeez. Don't... <laughs> It's, uh, you sound like you're trying to get a girl to come over to your house. You're like, it's right there. Just fucking Google it. <laughs> Two hours later, she's yeah. like, Google where the fuck do you live? It's like 25 just minutes down the street. Just come uh, on, let's it's go. It's a little, little Mexican town, away, uh, 25 minutes away from L.A. Uh-huh. What do your parents do? Uh, construction and uh, sales. Construction and sales. Your dad's in construction. My mom's in construction. Wow, what is your... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a good yeah, one yeah. in there. Good no, job. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Uh, yeah, dad's in construction. My mom sells, uh, it's called... Princess. Papaya. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. What, what does she sell? She has, she has a lotus. cart. She sells a watermelon and everything. What does she really sell? No, she sells, a, it's called Princess House. Princess House. It's Tell like, us what it's that like, is. Like. It's Tupperware for Mexican people. Oh, what's... It? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard of this. It, it's all glass. You it's don't know uh, about this? Hey, I got some Princess House full. You want to buy some, man? Uh, <laughs> It'll keep your shit fresh, <laughs> honey. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's well, uh, why, it's why what, what, what it's <laughs> what's the difference between regular Tupperware and Mexican Tupperware? It's mostly Mexican people who buy this, so. But why? Why I, do they I don't do that? Know, man. They I only don't know. take pesos. It's pretty. It's pretty pricey too, which is weird. But uh, have you heard of Princess House, dude? I never heard of it, fool. But I got some. If you want to buy some. <laughs> It's right here. It's right there. It's in Bell Gardens. Yeah. It's only it's fucking right two hours away, fool. No, 20 minutes away. God damn it. How many quinceañeras have you been to? Honestly, I go like once a week, <laughs> but <laughs> I sell out every time, me. Heck yeah. Joe Brig is Mexican light. Whoa. All right. This guy's just, all right. Bell Gardens. Is I it, get it. Is it's this fine. a Mexican it's drum off without I, the drums? Yes. Hey, yo, I, yo, I, I'm, more okay, Mex- right. I'm more I Mexican live- than you, dog. You don't even know what Princess House Tupperware is, dog. <laughs> you don't know about the Tupperware? You don't even know, uh, Mexican fool. light, my f- Wait, ass. Jo- I mean, what do you Does mean Joel he's Mexican speak light other than know. Princess Does House? Does he speak what? Spanish? Si, sí, lo hablo. Bien. Y oh, lo entiendo wh- también. Oh, que bueno. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, what everybody. the fuck? You, go, you suck, you lose, you fuck. My yeah. God. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. People don't like it I'm, when I get angry. I'm trying to attack everybody on stage. Why, why you, you call know there are people. Yeah. There, are people cool, yeah. <laughs> there are people that speak Spanish that aren't right. Spanish. They're not Mexican at all. Yeah. You know, so like that's Spaniards? not a proof of being Mexican is being able to speak Spanish. That's a good point. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. You're I mean, welcome. gracias. You're welcome. Good job, Doug. Getting alto with Doug. Is there? Uh, you're calling him Mexican light. Is there anything? Uh, is there anything that you would consider super Mexican about yourself or super white about yourself? Uh, no. Yeah. Probably. Oh. His mom <laughs> sells no. princess. Yeah, my mom sells princess house in Bell Gardens. Princess house. It's predominantly Mexican. So it's like so. A, it's like glass containers with like plastic lids. Yeah, it's different shit. Over. Cups, plates. Right. It's yeah. got the Virgin Mary on the top. Pretty of it. much. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Elmer, uh, you know, you you did it. You went on stage for your first time ever. Yeah. Feel free to come back anytime. It was nice to meet you. you. There you go. Elmer it. signs, everyone. <laughs> Elmer signs. How about a hand for the band tonight? I got to say, I love Jesse. Uh, I love uh, Phyllis Watkins on that trumpet. It sounds beautiful. Yeah, you're do- amazing. Much cooler than your uh, brother. And you, di- you didn't get the okay. weird nose that runs in the family, that gigantic beak that your brother has. I got a surgery. We keep telling Jeremiah to get one, but he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever comes up next, just uh, it might be a little slippery. Right yeah, there. don't fall. Yeah, his back was wet. Oh, uh, second wet back joke. That's not why I said that. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Teddy Westside. This is a new name. This should be interesting. Teddy Westside. Uh-huh. Oh, t- 
Teddy Westside. Uh, I don't see anyone. Unless it's this guy. Uh, no movement nope. happening. Nope. Is nope. that Teddy Westside? Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, I mean. Oh, Doug's going to do a minute. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I live on. Hey! I live on the west side. A lot of crazy things over there. OJ killed somebody. I mean, allegedly. And they got. Uh... <laughs> I get it now. A minute is hard to do. It's really hard to fill a whole minute up here. Let's do some crowd work. Has anybody tried that? Where are you from? Uh, but seriously, I'm going to cede the floor to, uh, we need to bring more people on. But that was fun. There you go. Little Teddy West side give for me you. The, give me the bear, Brian. Give me the bear. Give him the bear. It's too late for No bear? bear? Oh, it doesn't have to be the exact time, but all right. The old uh, red, band st red band sticking by the rules for some reason. Now he'll play it uh, when we bring up the next comedian. Put your hands together for Bridget Dow, everyone. Bridget Dow. She's here. Here she is, Bridget Dow, everybody. Hey. Oh, man. Hey, thank you. Okay, so there's a... Uh, what? There's um, three... There's three suicide bombers, right? And they're uh, group texting, because that's what they do. <sighs> yeah, I went there. Um, they're at the airport, and it's lunchtime. They're at different airports, and they're group texting on their thing. The first one goes, fuck, man. If I get tuna salad sandwich for lunch one more time, I'm just pushing the button. That's it. We're done. And the second guy's like, dude, I'm bored, and I'm irritated, and I feel you. If I get egg salad sandwich one more time, dude, sit down, push the button, we're done. The third guy goes, yeah, for sure. If I get peanut butter and jelly one more time, that's it. I'm pushing the button. We're done. So the next day, they reconvene said airports, different ones. I don't know how it works. I'm not a suicide bomber. They're texting together. Sure enough. The first one gets a uh, tuna salad. Push the button. There goes Jacksonville or whatever fucking state. Second one, same thing. Egg salad. Boom. Done. Third one, peanut butter and jelly. Boom. Done. They're all at the fucking funeral. And they're with their 40 virgins and all the wives are together. The first one goes, I don't understand. He loved tuna salad sandwiches. And the second one goes, I don't understand. He oh loved egg salad God. sandwich. And the third one goes, okay, okay, I don't hold understand. On. Boop, boop, boop. I'm she was so mean, close to Holy finishing. Shit. That's what they said. So close. That's what they said? That, is that the punchline? No. The punchline is the wife turns and goes to the peanut butter and jelly sandwich one. I don't understand. He makes his own lunch. I don't understand. He makes his own lunch. Right? Oh, suicide bomber. Yeah. Why would you? Woo! <laughs> I'm going to get through this with you, Tony. I know. Uh, I'm not scared. It's fine. Jeez Louise. Only uh, only 90 seconds to it's get to cool. that punchline. Uh, Tony. But it's also, it just sounded like a joke that you'd hear like somebody saying in a bar like that ha just keeps having all these beats that are unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually when you get to the punchline, they go, okay. There was a lot of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of setup there. I mean, I Jesus, we were trimming. Uh, we were trimming like seven, eight extra words off of one guy earlier. I would, I would cut all the way, all the it. way, all. all the way. Yeah, uh, it also doesn't feel anything like about you or your experience oh, or God, no one life. gives a fuck about that. Let's be real. So you, all your jokes <laughs> are gonna, all your, <laughs> all your jokes are gonna be like three things walk into a bar and one says this and another says that and the third one says I don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, it's D funny during, that, your, uh, during your three guys walk into a bar joke, three guys walked out of this bar. Uh, let's check in with uh, Joel, Bert, Joel Jimenez back there. Oh, it's just funny that you howled after because she looks like Michelle Wolf was actually part wolf. <laughs> <laughs> there Attack is a little, there is a little Michelle. A, attacked by wolf? <laughs> I'll deal with it later. It's cool. Yeah, okay. So, uh, welcome to the show. Is this your first time on? It is. Thank yes, you. Yes, welcome to the show, Thank Bridget. You. Uh, Thank you. How long have you been doing stand up comedy? It's Brigitte. I've been doing stand up for Jesus. like a year. All right. It's, I've uh, been called Thank worse, God. but I just want to get it right from the jump. You know? Brigitte. Yes. All right. Brigitte. French for bullshit. And what was your answer there? How long have you been doing stand up? A year. One year. All yes. here in Los Angeles? Yes, sir. Where are you from? 
L.A. Born and raised. No, I was born Bell in Cincinnati. Bell Gardens? Very close. Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. Sir. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, since I was, what, nine months old? I don't know what. I'll take nine months old. Uh, so um, what do you do for a living? Uh, comedy full-time. I quit my social work credential to do comedy full-time. How do you do? Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. How do you do? How do you make money doing comedy? I'm on social security disability. Oh. So that's how. My job is not killing myself. Social security disability. So yeah. how'd you get that? I applied for it when I was 18. Um, but how? What, how did you? What did you have to say to get it? It's a. It's a. It's a road. It's a journey uh-huh. to get free money from uh-huh. the government. Uh-huh. It took a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a series of tests. But people are judging. They're just mad. They're not getting free money from the government. I think. Uh, but yeah. It's okay. Just plow it's through cool. it. Ignore oh, them. Oh, I always do. Free money from the government. Remember that guy that used to sell those books with yeah. like dollar signs? Like, there's a yeah. bunch of money out there. Yeah. Just they're, come and get yeah. it. They're not telling you everything. So <laughs> it's like it's like an SAT test, and then you just like choose zero the whole time. No, or sort of. You just have to kind. I mean, I I have a dis. What I mean, I don't. Do you want to? Do you not okay. want to talk about we it? We can. No, we absolutely can. Okay. If you don't want to, we don't have to. Yeah. No, I have um, borderline personality disorder. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, and I went to my first psych ward when I was 11, and I tried uh-huh. to kill myself several times. Uh huh. So uh, yeah. So that's interesting. <laughs> uh, how long? What's the longest you've ever spent in a psych ward? If you don't mind talking I about. I don't it. mind. I spent 33 days in Los Encinas when I was 17. Wow. Yeah. So tonight you were the suicide bomber. Maybe. <laughs> Hello. Somebody called Jeremiah, tell him he can take the whole month off. It, uh... Wow. <laughs> Phyllis Watkins. Anything her brother can do, <laughs> she can do, do better. better. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. So as you were saying. <laughs> what's that? So uh, borderline personality. So how does that affect you? Like what's, can you give us an example of a time recently where like uh, you had like an, what we would maybe call an episode? It's weird because, uh, yeah, uh, the bus, maybe, or, uh, oh, my God. It seems like borderline personality hits a lot of people on the in bus. In public? Um, yeah. yeah Whenever the public I bus system house, is yeah. just basically fucking just uh, borderline personality Uber, you know what I mean? It's just one big. Uh, more of a Lyft driver. So uh, what happened on the bus? No, it, um, I just think that people tend to just... <sighs> Is it happening right now? No, <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> well, it's me. Is that mine? <laughs> Is that on me? <laughs> I don't think I've ever activated it's one of those before. That seems exciting. It, it's weird because I think, I don't like it all weird. It goes back to, is, is it the environment or is it me? You know, is it people around me that like made me feel pressured and pushed into acting triggered or is it just me and I can control my affect and emotions I feel guilty about being on social security disability then I look at who our president is and I'm like fuck you pay me that's how I feel about it so like if anybody else you think has an he, issue, you think it's coming from his wallet no not at all but I feel like everybody else kind of he's, has pr- he's basically the only like, one right. out of all of us that doesn't pay taxes right, right. but there you go are you it's taking some of that wall money? Because we need that wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think you're, uh, I think that's uh, all very interesting um, stuff. Uh, w- have you ever had a real job? Yeah. Like what? Oh, God. Um, oh, fuck. I worked at rehabs, paramedic. I was an ambulance driver, EMT for four years. Wow. That must you can be long. on social security disability this and still best. work. Is that true? Let me true? be perfectly clear about that. Yeah. You can, you just have Aphrodite knows. Hell yeah. You can, I've worked. I gotta. You're just like, how do I make a living? And I'm like, well, right now, just 
that. So I thought I'd tell you I the guess. truth. You ever save any? I love it. Of course. Uh, you're yeah. absolutely, you're, you're doing a great job. Brigitte. Thanks, Tony. Absolutely. Um, so uh, you ever save anybody's life in, on, as a paramedic? Yeah, several times. Yeah. And I've well, also seen people die. So I don't right. think I'm. Um, Is yeah. there any one, uh, one instance that uh, you really felt rewar- the rewards of being a paramedic? Was there one time that pops in your head that really, you know. Like, yeah. Like helping a person die somehow? For sure. Actually, that's exactly what it was. What happened? Uh, these, these, uh, there, there were these twins. They were born very preemie to the point where when we showed up to transport them, we knew they weren't going to last very right. long. Right. Like their blood pressure was like two over four. Uh. And uh, and we got them to the we got them in the rig and to the other hospital. And while we were in the, well, while we were drive before we drove off, the lady was the mom was like. Just if they die, just give us flashes, high beams. And we were like, there's no pressure there. Don't worry. And we're like, yeah, sure. No problem. And then we get to the hospital and then um, they die in the elevator. And when we go up, okay. right. <laughs> when we go up, she's like, the mom's already there waiting and we open the door and then the nurse that's And with do us. they haunt the Overlook Hotel to this day? <laughs> So wait, so you're it's in the, the elevator. It's the Hollywood Hotel they haunt because we were on the way to Children's Hospital and that's where they died. But when we got off, she, she just uh, put her hand on my shoulder. She goes, I know it's not your fault, which is like the weirdest thing to say to someone because I'm also getting paid and also her kids were born like three months early. So it's like, I don't know it's not my fault, but thank you for reassuring me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a weird moment where I was like, man, I needed to hear that, but I also didn't need to hear that. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. I uh, that's Tony. a lot. Were they identical Louise. twins or uh, the were journal. they? It didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. <laughs> Fuck them anyway. Those loser twins. Didn't, Am I right? She didn't twins. get a good look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been fraternal. All right. Well, Tony, I got a question. A real yes. question. Is there anything you do every day to kind of like maintain and feel good every morning when you get up to try to keep it at bay? I do. Good um, question. I try to do at least 30 minutes of exercise. So like I'll go outside for 30 minutes, whether that's like a walk or a jog that's or great. a run or roller skate. I played roller derby for seven years. So. Whoa. Hello. That's cool. that's what so was your cool. roller derby name? I'm on a backside. Wow. Those are always good. A lot of backs. All right. That is okay. incredible. Right. Yes, good. I could yeah. see why. Like you right. <laughs> that w- that would never be uh, that would never be Joel's uh, roller derby name. That's for sure. <laughs> I lost my backside. <laughs> His name's not a back. I'm sorry, all the weights in the front, Tony. Oh, look at that! Wow. <laughs> my goodness. Um, well, uh, well, Brigitte, I'll tell you, you know, the comedy store, a place like this, it's always a, la- a lot of people compare it to a land of misfit toys. And I just want to let you know, I think you fit in very well here. So, I really uh, appreciate that, thanks Tony. for Thank signing so up much. and being part of the show Thank and you. doing stand up comedy. Have a great and night. Thank you. Stay healthy, have fun. There she goes, Brigitte Dow, everybody. Brigitte. <laughs> Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, we could do that. Uh, we have a uh, regular on this show, everybody. He writes and performs a brand new minute every single week. Uh, not easy to do, but, hey, man, he's just so gosh darn funny. I really love this guy. He's got a really wacky style, and he's so much fun, always entertaining. Put your hands together for him. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only William Montgomery. Here he is in the flesh, everyone. He's focused. Looking down in front of him. Come on, guys. You got to make some noise for William Montgomery. My, uh, my brother's been having a sexual relationship with his teacher. Uh, the weird thing is we're homeschooled. I'd like to uh, <laughs> do a cut scene from that. Just MIA paper planes playing, and I bust through the door. Just like, this is her mom! <laughs> oh, Emma, shit, you live in the swamps! That is my impression of Swamp Thing in the new Avengers movie. Uh, hell of a superhero. I uh, think I realized I was addicted to magic for the first time when I brought a rabbit out of the top hat and... Uh, Saw the kid smile. I'd like to do a little cutscene to that. Just am I a paper planes playing? And <laughs> me just me just saying, hold on, where's Richard Sabalas? <laughs> H- 
Heck yeah, <laughs> William Montgomery, everyone. <laughs> the sound of two premature born twins dying just rolled down the street yeah. so at the end of his set. Heard some sirens there, some medics. Suffocation. Another fun set. How about another yeah. hand for William Montgomery, everybody? Very funny jokes. God, I really each, messed up that strong. final joke. He opened strong, but with each sentence, I, it made less and less sense to me until at the end I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> wow, you broke his formula. <laughs> it's like uh, me when I, I read Shel Silverstein poems. What are Chuck Silverstein poems? <laughs> Shell Chuck. Shell Silverstein. Oh. What's Chuck Silverstein? <laughs> yeah, I heard Chuck. <laughs> Chuck is Shell's not his articulate cousin. Channel One's no fun. Yeah, hold on. Where's Chuck? <laughs> no, there is no Chuck. I heard Chuck. You never even said Chuck. I didn't. I'm just worried about. There's been this one guy on YouTube just talking. Oh yeah. Is there I'm sure he's loving this after the Edwards about. I well, I was feeling good about the set tonight, and then you've God, been, I messed up. William, you've been letting these uh, peop- commenters on YouTube uh, really. Sometimes you really let them work you up. Is there anything you'd like to say to the guy that's been uh, talking shit about you on YouTube? If you want to look right down at that camera, right down the barrel, is there anything you'd like to? Uh, if you'd like to send him a message, is there anything you'd like to say? Yeah, Edward Sabalis, I don't think you uh, you realize I can skate. I don't I don't know if you realize I don't know how to read. It's funny you keep bringing that up. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are right about that. You did your research. I failed out after first fourth grade. Um, <laughs> At the first grade. The first grade, never <laughs> learned Who? how to read, so you did your research. I'll give you that. <laughs> Who are you talking to? What's his name? Edward Sabalis. Oh, Edward. <laughs> I thought you were calling him N-word. <laughs> yeah, that would not be <laughs> Edward nice. Edward Sabalis. What kind of YouTube screen name is Edward Sabalis? There's no numbers in that or anything? What kind of weird troll uses his actual name? Just Edward underscore Sabalis. Yeah, I have no... Stop saying N-word. <laughs> Wow, hey. Uh, have you ever uh, said the N-word before, William? Y'all don't repeat this, but uh, <laughs> there was a time I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. I was a big Project Pat fan, and I'll be quite frank. There was a time, 10th, 11th grade, I was with my buddy Jay Martin and his silver 4 oneer just pounding Coors Lights, just, yeah, singing all of Project Pat's lyrics. Yeah, I've said it before. <laughs> <laughs> you sing, uh, you've you sang it along with songs. How's that? Uh, we missed you this week on the road. We, uh, I know that yeah. would have been so much fun. So many people asking about you. Yeah, we had to give a little disclaimer just to make sure people knew at the beginning of almost each episode. We told them, you know, William couldn't make it, and there was a lot of groans. Uh, yeah, like uh, we don't know where William is. He was in Maui, Hawaii last week. You uh, were looking for Tony Chen. Yeah, what do you do? How do you get to Maui? Uh, on a boat. It took three <laughs> weeks. It was uh, more than a four-hour tour. I was a big Gilligan's Island fan growing up. Um, hold on, what happened to Jeremiah? Uh, hold on, William. That- Oh, yes, Phyllis, you want to answer that? <laughs> I don't know. He's got, like, class or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, William, How are you doing? Whoa, William. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hold on. How's it going? Wow, William. How we long found you been playing, though? Damn, well, yeah, we found your type. By I the way, this is exactly... Uh, <laughs> are they making out right now? What the hell just happened? This looks like yeah. a young uh, young Bill and Hillary Clinton meeting each other for the first time in Arkansas. Tony, all over make a again. black and white and picture together. Jeremiah and I are almost genetically identical. Hold on, Hillary? <laughs> no, Wait, I'm a William, Phyllis. what are you doing? Stop sexually assaulting the poor trumpet player here. Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, you guys know each other, right? You guys are friends? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> William, what's going on? You uh, you a little bit uh, horned up I tonight? I don't think he knows I'm wearing a wig right now. <laughs> William, are you? <laughs> William. Don't y'all don't repeat this. I've gotten back on uh, AOL uh, chat rooms. I'm <laughs> You've got me. Cat106 at AOL.com. I'll seriously, y'all don't repeat this, but I've been on the cat chat room recently. 
<laughs> having fun. And yeah, Tony, I have been just sort of getting on edge to some extent. Recently, it's a, a horrible, uh, horrible nightmare. I've been playing Brick Breaker a bunch. I've Maybe she'll let you go home with the trumpet. This is a very expensive <laughs> William, do you, oh, okay. do you know how to play not. any uh, musical instruments? I've never asked you that before, before we get you out of here. you know any musical instruments? I used to uh, play the synthesizer. Um, I need to get it out here. First time I ever went on stage. It was at Memphis University School. I think that's where it all started. Um, I was in the 10th grade running for a student council position, running against a guy named Ronnie Curry, who his sort of shtick was he would fall from the top of the steps and everyone would laugh. I was against him. I had my synthesizer out. And I just told everyone my life's been going pretty hard. The only thing getting me through this is a song. And then I read the lyrics out to Karma Chameleon. <laughs> and then I played my synthesizer. I need to get it, get it back out here. Wow. How did you make it to 10th grade if you failed 1st grade? I cheated. Ah, truth comes out. Don't repeat this, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but I don't know how to read. Y'all... Don't repeat that. I'm, Is I'm, that true? Yeah, I see those red signs everywhere, the hexagons, I think. I don't... What do they say? Stop. <laughs> All right. Uh, William, always so much fun. Always <laughs> one of my favorite parts right, of the show. You. Thank you. Make some noise for him. Another new minute and another great interview by William Montgomery. Yeah, there he goes. You guys want to go back to the bucket one more time, huh? Let's bucket, bucket. do this shit. Your final comedian of the night goes by the name of Bobby Jimmy. Bobby Jimmy. Hey. hey how about another hand yeah. for the band, too? Oh, huh? look at this. Oh my God. Hell yeah. One more time for Bobby Jimmy, everyone. Hey. What up? So I just rode my uh, Harley out here from Colorado. My arms are tired. Thanks. So I live in a small mountain town in uh, Colorado, and we don't have any traffic lights, but I think they still mean green is go. Here in L.A., it seems to mean watch the fuck out. Um, I don't know if anybody drives a car before, uh, built before 1940, but... That was the last year they were made without turn signals. Um, I haven't done comedy before, but I think um, traffic comedy might be a thing, you know? Might be a good, might kill with traffic comedy. Um, I saw a high-speed chase here in LA last week where a guy was hanging out of the window and shooting at the cops at the same time. There was a pursuit vehicle full of Japanese tourists taking photos at the same time. Traffic here is like Disneyland or the Walk of Fame or the glory hole here at the Comedy Store. It's a tourist attraction. And uh, I think that's my time. Hell yeah, absolutely. Bobby Jimmy. Yeah, keep that mic out of there. I want to talk with you, Bobby. This is very... First of all, this was your first time ever doing stand-up? Yeah. I fucking love it. Put, put your hands together for Bobby Jimmy. We're about, to, we're about to have a nice talk. I'm excited about this. Sweating, shaky voice. It's all good. You're, you're comfortable now. We're going to just talk with you, ask you some questions about your life. We're gonna, I want to find out more about you. We've never really had a Civil War reenactor on this show before. <laughs> this is very exciting. So you're from Colorado? Sir, yes, sir. Born and raised? No, I've been out there for uh, a little while, like 30 years. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing? What, how, uh, can we ask how old you are? Snowboarding, weed, and skateboarding. Man, look at you. That's basically Colorado. like the, our entire band uh, <laughs> all in one. That's the things that they're into. Yeah, the rim shot was slow, so there's got to be some reason. Yeah, he's there. usually, we're usually not uh, paying attention. Hold on. Any, any uh, any, anytime Joel uh, gets to take a break, he likes to go lay under the bushes and uh, with his, uh, and s his sandwich and a lunchbox. <laughs> and, his, and his hat. A lot like of people don't know that's hat. how Joel actually sleeps. Yep. A very fire marshal bill approach. 
So, uh, Bobby Jimmy, hell yeah, the Daniel Day-Lewis of the open mic scene. Let's talk about it. Um, what made you want to start stand-up comedy? Uh, what made you want like to do it? Like everybody in the world just grew up watching comedy, love it, and this place is iconic, and given damn the chance right. to do it, I signed up. So. Damn right, absolutely. How long are you visiting L.A. for? I come out here uh, once in a while. I'm here for like another week, I think. What do you, you ride a motorcycle out here or something? Try to as often as I can, but it's dangerous as shit. Would yeah. You, is that what you brought this time? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you come out solo. You have a sidecar or anything like that? No, with one of your no buddies? sidecar. Yeah. Solo, yeah. That's so fun. It's a one-person thing, a motorcycle. I, I, yeah, I know a motorcycle is a one-person thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. So, uh, How Bob, many people you get on that motorcycle? In this country? Just me. I mean, they're, yeah. my bike probably five or six. Countries? Yeah, in the Philippines, Thailand, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So Bobby, tell us more about you. What have you been doing your whole life? Tell us, like, uh, other than the, like, you know, the skateboarding and snowboarding. Um, yeah, that's about it. Skateboarding my whole life. So come out here to Venice to score heroin and skate around a little bit. That's I love it. Place. Is that true? You do heroin? Not often, but that's the place I've found. I, mean, I love well, it. That is so cool. That, um, yeah, when in Venice. How's heroin make you feel? Like what's, what's the first? What's the first ten minutes of heroin that when you feel it? Like, how's it feel? Just BS, and I can't oh. go into that. So oh, yeah. I, I was so excited. I thought Fuck. we were finding out that no, you do heroin no. sometimes. Well, that's a Venice thing, right? We I mean, were I hoping you would tie off right here. Yeah, that right. would have been I that would have been pretty epic. Yeah, you have you any got kids? A, you got a belt. You have any kids, Bobby? Not that I know. You of, ever no. been married? No. 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 You have a girlfriend? Yeah. Back in Colorado. Sure. Yeah. How's the relationship? A little bit rocky right now? She wants to put a... <laughs> <laughs> you ever tap the Rockies? It has its highs and lows. Yeah. Hey, I like that. Um, so uh, how long have you been with her? Um, off and on, about a year. It's Colorado, so it's, uh, you get your turn, like a doorknob. You know, it's wow. Wait, so you're saying like women get around. They sleep with multiple men in Colorado, and the guys do too. The, yeah, it's, it's tough. You've got to be a player. You've know? you got to be able to do... Uh, a backflip on a snowboard or else you're, you're not getting any action. Damn, or look you at you. Like, That's a spike. whole different world out there. <laughs> you excited yeah. about the uh, mushroom? Now I know why I've never gotten any action in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you're big you, in Colorado. You're I thought it was just because I was breathing too hard. You excited about the new uh, legalized mushrooms? Uh, it's decriminalized already. I don't think I'm excited. I um, go into places and I have to wonder now who might be tripping a little bit. Um, yeah. Right. Microdosing. I mean, yeah. you go into a restaurant now and the staff ignores you. They just hide and giggle yeah. and you got to think like <laughs> half of them are Is that true? Jealousy. No. Yeah, they're yeah. going to microdose people are eating the shit out of you at P.F. Chang's. Yeah. I know a lot of people microdosing and that's like weird because you could take like, like I know a guy microdosing acid. Like you could just have like a little piece of acid and be tripping your ass off and you're working at Panera Bread and you're like microdosing. You know? I've never like, been a fan of microdosing. I mean, yeah. if you give me a bag of mushrooms, I'm going to eat them all. I'm not going to like, oh, I, I need a, a cap. When's the last well, time you ate mushrooms? Not give you a, uh, a couple days ago. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you fucking with us or are you telling no, the no, truth? No, no, a couple days ago. Yeah, what'd you do? Uh, went to dinner. Here in this is here um, in LA, Colorado. You go, you know, it, again, you got uh, a little bag of mushrooms, and you're supposed to only eat one, and then you end up eating the whole bag. And sure. I mean, for some people, they might have gone to the hospital, but I've tripped before, so you know. I know what like some people do. I'm asking you, when you ate them a couple days ago, what did you do? What were you doing? Uh, Just of, were you hanging out at the beach? Were you? Uh, I went to dinner. I went to a restaurant. I went to dinner, and once I felt like I needed to leave. Can I ask you where I you were eating dinner? At? Um, somewhere. In Upland? I don't even uh, know where that is. Just like a diner or a... No, a nice restaurant. Oh, you oh, went yeah. to a nice restaurant? I love that place. <laughs> <laughs> Not that place, the other place. Oh, yeah. the other nice restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. That's so... That's but yeah, if... Um, you know, you you know see de comedy kind of involves details. That's what he's going for here. Yeah, I guess like I, was well, I honestly info. didn't know the name of the restaurant. Right. It so, like but a it's, a, it's a, like an upscale restaurant, and then all of a sudden the mushrooms really kick in. They had in. linen napkins, yeah. Wait, what? Linen napkins. Lin oh, yeah, yeah, linen napkins. So did you get to finish your meal, or did you trip so hard you just like left? Uh, no, it unfortunately didn't kick in the way I wanted it to. I think the microdosing, you have different species of mushrooms now, so you can uh -huh. get like, you know, the kind you're going to see God with, or you know, maybe <laughs> yeah. the kind you can go out to dinner with. Right, right. What and do you do when you see God? Do you like 
ask him for forgiveness Show him your and dick. be showered with for his what? Love. What do you need forgiveness Lay for? Anything interesting? You ever you ever commit a crime? <sighs> yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I grow weed, and uh, you know, before it became legal, that was a crime. Have you had a bad trip before, like, like a really bad trip? Not a really bad one. I think you know we've zoned out pretty hard. Remember um, those talking Coke machines back in the '80s? That kind of freaked me out <laughs> after a Pink Floyd concert. You know, you put the money in, and they would talk to you. And I actually had to have somebody help me with that. But. How long? How long were you? Damn. How long have you been growing weed for uh, in Colorado? In Colorado, thirty years. Oh, how long have you been growing weed? Period. What year is it? Eighty-four. I started. In wow, 85? that's interesting. 30, so I am old. Thirty-four yeah. years. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for your service. It's pretty good. At it. Incredible. No problem. My goodness. What else? There must be some more about you. you I can tell there's some, there's some interesting shit underneath um, this. I've tough traveled guy around exterior. the world uh, racing skateboards. Ah, That's been pretty cool. Wow. Used so you, to come out here and like, race. Uh, you race? Glendora Mountain Road. You go downhill? Yeah. How, what's fast? the fastest you've ever gone on a skateboard? Over 70. What the? Wow. Oh, okay. That's now we're cool. getting there. That's fucking You wear like a leather suit and a helmet when you do it? That's what it looks like. Well, don't do that. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, there's um, Joey. You should have Glendora Mountain Road out here is a big one. GMR. Um, oh, this is a birthplace. Signal Hill was where. Is it there any video of you uh, out on the internet? Uh, you know what? Yeah, there is actually a video film. of me where I'm high on acid, and we were talking about skateboarding. Uh, oh, you're uh, just yeah. talking about. Uh, but I'm talking. No, no, about I was actually. There's video footage of me skateboarding. While they didn't know speed I was speed skateboarding. Like, mm -hmm. is is there any video of you going over like 50 miles an hour on a skateboard somewhere? Uh, Vice. It's on Vice. How would Shut we, up. Do, you know, do you know what we would search just so that people listen to the podcast? It's a show with Rick McCrank, and it's um. Bandit? No, that was the one he did with the empty buildings. It was another one about skateboarding that they did after that. And they were supposed to interview me on Friday, and it didn't happen. Saturday, it didn't happen. And then Sunday, I started partying with a bunch of my friends, and the producers came over and said, hey, we're ready for that interview. Oh, wow. And all my buddies were like, <laughs> <laughs> good luck. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, the, the title of the episode actually closes with me saying something philosophical because I was out of my head. I love you know, that. Yeah. That's so cool. Rick McRae on Vice. We'll I'm getting find applauded that. for tripping on acid. That's you great. ever uh, you ever Mom been in, you, you ever been injured uh, uh, snowboarding, Many times. skateboarding? What's yeah. the worst injury you ever had? Um, it, waking up in the hospital was pretty bad. Um, Head injury. Yeah, right to the back of the dome. Had a helmet on. Um, that explains a lot. Woke up. Yeah, woke up in the hospital and. Um, said, where the hell am I? And my buddies are like, you've been talking to us for the last half hour, dude. Wow. Uh, really? So wow. that Damn. was, yeah, there's thumbs are going the wrong way. And, and yeah. that, that was a skateboarding one, the head injury? Yeah. Because that's cement. A lot, probably a lot easier to have a traumatic brain injury from that than snowboarding. Yeah, there's, um, you know, it's CTE runs rampant through that whole extreme sport industry. You know, you got... Mm -hmm. The fri especially the fringe ports where you're, you're doing stupid stuff like that, going 70 on a skateboard. You can, uh -huh. you can get messed up. I don't do it too much anymore. Right. How old are you? 48. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Heck yeah. Um, hey, I'm going to say something and then you say, yeah, you know me. CTE? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby. Well, uh, I mean, so much fun. Nice to meet you. You think you're going you're gonna to come back? Next time, uh, sign up again. I don't. I know this was awesome. I had a chance to do this at the yeah. comedy store. This is oh, fucking yeah. cool. It, I don't know if I could ever top that. There he goes, Bobby Jimmy. Everybody, thanks, Bobby. Thank you. Come on, make some noise for Bobby, everyone. Your final comedian of the night. Uh, hey, look at that drawing from Ryan Chaebelt, everybody. Look at that incredible, beautiful red band Benson Hinchcliffe and the band. How about another hand for the great Doug Benson, everybody? Thank you. Getting Doug with high. You're going a bunch of places. Doug yeah. Benson. Doug loves movies. DougLovesMovies.com. And I'll be on uh, tomorrow night, for those of you here, I'll be on uh, Bong Appetit on Viceland. Ooh, la la. Yeah, Bong it Appetit. Fun. It's a lot of fun. Heck yeah. Uh, we you love you, Doug. Me. Thank you so much for always being one of our favorite guests and uh, coming around on the road and here to the comedy store. 
Uh, to, yeah, to all the comics that come up here, you know, good for you. Keep, Absolutely. Keep doing it. Keep, I, I always say that if I, was, if I was starting out or anywhere near my first few years, uh, I would be definitely signing up every week for this show. Lord knows. I, I begged, I bent the knee to people running open mics to give me a janky three-minute spot before. So how about a hand for her first time ever in the band, Phyllis Watkins, everybody. Jesse Johnson. She's on social media at what? Jet Ski Johnson. Is that right? J-E-T-S-K-I. Is there an underscore there? No, Jet Ski Johnson. All one word. You did amazing, by the way. Yeah, you sound like. so damn good on that trumpet. Thank you. So awesome. How about a hand for uh, the legendary Bat at a Thousand tonight? Chroma Chris, everybody. Chroma, what do you think about tonight's episode? It's going the distance. Hey. <laughs> How about a hand for the leader of the band tonight and J Mexican drum off winner, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, huh? You know him, you love him. He's on social media at Mostly Sorry. Joel, you just went to six or seven cities you've never been to in your life doing sold out shows. How do you how do you feel about oh, that? Oh, I'm so jet lagged. I can't wait to sleep, but I love you guys. Thanks for coming out. There he goes, uh, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. So honest. So much fun. We're going to be back uh, next week with, uh, with, uh, with a guest. And then uh, June 10th, we have Jeffrey Ross here. And June 17th, for the first time ever, comedy store legend Brian Holtzman will be a guest. What? First time ever. That's going to be amazing. I can't wait for that. You can get a Death Squad pin or a Tony Hinchcliffe pin available at Rockin' Pins. Uh, check out Infinite CBD if you're uh, into CBD. Pre-order uh, the new Reagan and Watkins album. You can do that now. That's released uh, June 7th, but you can pre-order it now. Or you can come to the official release party on June 6th right here at the Comedy Store. The first ever Reagan and Watkins album. Self-titled Reagan and Watkins comes out then. How about another hand for Red Band, everybody? Uh... So much fun. We love you guys. Thank you for coming out. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Good night. Bye.